What's up folks? Today we're going to talk about vector tiles. This is part one of a two-part series and what we're going to cover today is what vector tiles are, why they're really awesome, how you could set up a tile server, and how you can consume those tiles and render that information on a map. Before we get into all of that fun stuff, just a really brief web mapping and tiles and slippy maps 101. In GIS we deal with gigantic sets of data and we have to take that data and render it and style it and output it in a way a client can understand. And up to this point it's generally been as, as PNGs, just raster images. That's a lot of work for a server to do. A server taking your raw data and then styling it and then spinning out an image and sending it to the client is a lot of work. So if your server did that per request, in other words, once a request gets then it has to make the tile right then, that's a lot of work. And if you have a lot of traffic, you're going to turn your server into a slag of molten metal. And even if you have a small amount of traffic, it's going to be slow. And your client's going to be waiting on those that stuff to show up. What we do for web maps is we pre-make that stuff. We pre-render that from the server. So all the server has to do is orient from the request what exactly it needs and send that pre-made stuff back out to the client. Now because the world is a big place, we can't send out, say, one image that covers uh, street level like zoom level 18, for the entire planet it would be enough pixels wide to go from here to the moon. So we chop those up into tiles. So those are our pre-cached tiles. And probably all seen something like this before. If you were looking at the level of the earth, we never call that zoom level zero, it'd be one tile, you zoom down one level, it, you multiply that times four, it's now four tiles. Zoom down a level, it'll be 4 times 4 is 16, and so forth, all the way down to whatever zoom level you support. And this tiling scheme is standardized. It uses Web Mercator, which I know, I know, isn't everyone's favorite projection. But it uses Web Mercator, it's standardized uh, tile size, standardized zoom levels. So when our client makes a request, it says, Give me zoom level this with x coordinate this and y coordinate that and it serves that that particular tile and that's how slippy maps and, and map tiling and map caches work now up until this point that's generally all been sending back rasters sending back a jpeg or a png and that's what gets rendered now that's been super great and it makes for maps that are very fast and responsive. But rasters have some problems. There's no way on a raster to change the styling even a little bit. If you have to do that, you have to build a whole nother set of tiles. So if you say, oh, I want these tiles, but I don't want to see buildings on it because I want to see something else. Or I want these these tiles and these features but I want them all to be a, a light gray grayscale so I can show chloroplasts over them. You have to build all new tile sets for that. Also because there's rasters you can't really fractionally zoom say I, you can't just zoom just a little bit in you have to do it by these set scales because a stretch raster looks like crap. And it takes a lot of storage space. Mecklenburg County, uh, one county of 100 in North Carolina, for us to build rasters as PNGs down to zoom level 20 is about 11 gigabytes. Imagine doing that for the United States or the planet. It's just a massive amount of data. So this is where vector tiles come in. They are also tiled, but instead of raster, they're vectors. And that gives you all kinds of stuff you can do with them. Because they're vectors and the renders as vectors, you can fractionally zoom in, like just a little bit, and everything will stay good and crisp because they're not rendering as rasters, they're, they're vectors. It's the same way an SVG will look good 
zoomed in, whereas a PNG will not. Also, because they're just delivering vectors and not styling, the styling is happening on the client. So if you want to make your vectors as all bright green, or you want to do a, a very dark uh, scheme, or you want to do a light gray, or say, I don't want to see buildings in this because it's going to be too distracting for what I want to show, you can do all that with the same set of vector tiles. You don't have to keep making more and more and more tile sets. You can just use the one, and you're styling it on the client a hundred different ways. And they're much smaller. Uh, Mecklenburg County, tiled as, as a PNGs down to zoom level 20, is 11 gigabytes. The entire United States of America in OpenStreetMap data in vector tiles is a little bit smaller than that. It's like 10.6 gigabytes. So one county, 10 gigabytes, or the whole US, 10 gigabytes. I'm going with the whole US. And because they're vectors, you can do cool stuff with them in the browser. You can rotate around. You can do different things. There are a lot of advantages to vector tiles. And we can actually kind of use them now. One problem with vector tiling is you generally use WebGL to render that stuff. And WebGL isn't supported in Internet Explorer till version 11. But the great news is Microsoft has kind of killed the old versions of Internet Explorer. In January of this year, they said, we're only supporting the most recent release of Internet Explorer on our, all of our platforms, which for Windows 7 and above is Internet Explorer 11. Because they're not releasing security patches for IE9 anymore, all these corporations that just kind of squat on old versions of IE have to upgrade their stuff or they're going to be riding high in a botnet herd. So we are now have the ability to use WebGL in our stuff. This makes vector tiles much more accessible. Now, giant nod to Mapbox because they came up with the vector tiling uh, Mapbox GL we're gonna be using, the vector tile scheme. They release all this stuff as, as, as open source software. If there's a company that hasn't done more to improve our industry and kind of turn on its head in the last five years, if there's anyone that's done that more than Mapbox, I don't know who they are. So giant credit to them for, for putting this stuff out that we can use. The next bit of good news, OSM to vector tiles. These folks have been done the great wonderful kind thing for us they have packaged up OpenStreetMap data as vector tiles and divided it into areas we might be interested in and they package this up and give it to us for free so we can just go grab say the united states of america as vector tiles and again that mb tiles file is smaller than just our little mecklenburg county as rasters so we can go grab it Mad props to Cloakin Technologies and the students from Geometa Lab HSR Switzerland, which is probably not how they say that there. It's probably you know, something Swiss. But they have packaged this stuff up so you can go out there and grab and put in, you know, in a cron job as wget to update every now and again these vector tiles from OpenStreetMap. Now they have great documentation and they tell you how to set up a server. Uh, the server they use is a gigantic PHP file. It's like a thousand lines plus long, which I couldn't really grok at a, at a glance. You can use that. PHP isn't my favorite way to do that kind of thing. For something that's like a really fast, high traffic event sort of thing, like one client opens up a browser, you know, with a full screen map, you know, that might be 10, 15 requests right there. I prefer Node for stuff like that. Node's event driven and is, is better equipped to handle that kind of uh, simultaneous high volume traffic. So what I did, I've got a MB tile server that I forked from 
uh, Chris Helms, and he deserves all the credit for this. I get people coming up to me at conferences. Oh, thanks for making that Emmy Tile server. Like, no, no, fling your fling your credit at at Chris. I just forked it to do some a couple things Mecklenburg wanted. In this case, I've just updated it so it will support vector tile MB tiles files. MB tiles is the is a SQLite database in a particular schema that stores both vec raster and now vector tiles as well. Serve out vector tiles you need to do a couple things in your the header of the response first. Uh, you need to set up cores. It's not like an image where it'll allow cross-site cross, cross uh, site scripting. So you need to set up your core stuff so you don't get that uh, cross-browser, cross-site scripting error when it tries to get these tiles. The content type is uh, xprotobuf for the MIME type. Content encoding, you have to set to gzip. If you don't, you will have a problem. In the MB tiles file, the PBF tiles are stored gzipped. You have to tell the browser when it comes back that that's what it is. If you don't, you will get an error. Ask me how the ask me how I know that. I stared at that error for a long, long, long time. That's it. Otherwise, it comes out just like a regular raster tile. You're getting your zxy request, and the extension is just PBF instead of PNG or JPG. And off it goes. We've got that sucker running somewhere. Yeah. Node saying I'm listening on port 3000 and I dare you to I dare you to crash me because I'm node. So I've got that MB ties file in that folder and the server's up and running. Now we can go over and have some fun. Right now from my machine from that one ting 10 gigabyte file, I'm serving up the entire United States of America. It does cache at a very high level the rest of the world as well, so you don't get pink tiles. If some Yahoo goes to your county website and zooms way the hell out. But it's got the whole US. We can go over to Nashville. My wife is making me watch that TV show, Nashville. It's, I don't wanna talk about it. Go to Nashville and you see it's got all the OpenStreetMap data. OpenStreetMap data is, is kind of great. In a lot of ways, in some ways it'll have more data than your municipality will. And in some ways it'll have less. But it's just super great. Got everything there. Let's go back over to Charlotte. See how fast this is as well. Here's Charlotte. We'll zoom in. Now, because these are vector tiles and we don't need any details on the vectors past zoom level 14, any zoom past zoom level 14, it doesn't have to fetch any more tiles. That is a ton of network traffic you're saving. Also, because they're vector tiles, you don't have to look at them straight on. You can spin these around, look at it from different angles. You can do different kinds of transformations like that. You notice when we spin it around, the labels are changing. North College Street is going up this way. We spin it back around. You notice it flips over when we're going this way. It's not upside down. Because these labels are rendering on the fly on the client. We can also change the styling right on the client. So here we see buildings. Say we have a use case where we don't want to see buildings. Well, we just have a different style that turns those off. We don't need a whole separate set of tiles for that. We just don't show the buildings. You say, well, I'm making a site that's all, you know, all black. It's not porn related, you know, so don't think that. It's just all black. So we'll just do a dark theme. This is all the same tiles. Because we're styling it in the client, we didn't need to go spend hours and hours and another who knows how many gigabytes of storage to, to save a different tile set. We just are applying a different style. Oh, we got to orient back north. I think it's kind of neat that you can rotate these vector tiles maps, but if a map isn't pointing straight north, then it just kind of is cognitively irritating. So you saw how we're serving those. 
just this simple little file. It's like 50 line file that will just serve your tiles all day long. Let's see how we actually consume the tiles. This is it. This is the whole file here. This little bit of code sets up the map and consumes the tiles and off it goes. Now it's a little bit different. We're using Mapbox GL. So we're loading those libraries up at the top of the file, which is a as a party foul, but we don't care. This little bit of code does all of all the consumption and renders out the map. Now Mapbox GL is a bit different. Um, normally you'd see like in Leaflet, you go to put in raster tiles, you just point, because it doesn't have to do any styling, you just point straight at the ZXY source and it just pulls that tile over. Because everything's being styled on the client, what we're pointing at is a style file. And all it does when we hit these radio boxes is change the style file that we're pointing at. The style file, style file, style file, style file, hmm, the style file just points at where the tile source is. Here we're pointing at United States of America on localhost 3000 where I'm serving them. So this is just a name that we'll use to reference in our styling and type vector and here's our tile source. And that's it. The rest of the style file, style file, style file, style file is how we're going to render out those vectors. And this isn't something you'd want to make by hand. This is something we'll talk about in the next video in this series. All we do is if we go to no buildings, it's the same file, same source. I just told it not to style any of the buildings. And the dark file, it just goes to this same source, same set of tiles, and the whole styling set is just different. So, how cool is that? Vector tiles, you've got a source for vector tiles you can use, you can serve them up yourself. Because it's 10 gigs for the whole United States, you could put it on a $5 a month DigitalOcean server and just serve this stuff all day long. Now in the next video in the series, we're going to talk about adding your own data and making and managing styles and that kind of stuff. Because some things you should add to OpenStreetMap if they're missing. OpenStreetMap is a great base map. You should add those if they're missing. Some things like say parcel lines, you're probably, there's actually a wiki page on, on people arguing for or against whether that should really be an OpenStreetMap. Because there's not a great diff tool so that a, say a municipality could up, throw in all the parcel lines and then do a diff and then update the parcel lines. There's not a great way to do that. So some things you're going to want to do from your own local data sources. Next one, we'll talk about making those tiles and, and serving them up yourself and styling them. All right. Bye-bye.